This week on Battle of the Ports, we take a look at a game Resident Evil owes so much to. This is Alone in the Dark, a survival horror video game designed by Frederick Reynal and developed and published by Infogrames. Yes, I believe that is the correct pronunciation. For MS-DOS back in 1992. Set in 1920s Louisiana, the game challenges the player to guide their character out of a haunted mansion advancing by solving puzzles while either banishing, slaying or eluding various ghosts and monsters. The player can collect and use weapons, manage a weight-based inventory system and explore a practically non-linear map. You can choose between Edward Carnby or Emily Hartwood, who are trapped inside the haunted mansion of the Seto. You start off in the attic, having ascended to the top of the mansion without incident and are tasked in finding a way out of the mansion while avoiding outsmarting or defeating various supernatural enemies including slave zombies and giant bipedal rat-like creatures. Many opponents can be beaten by solving a particular puzzle rather than a straight fight. In fact, a significant number of opponents cannot be killed at all. Much of the game involves exploration and puzzle solving and optionally searching the house for clues as to what occurred before the player's arrival. As you can see, items and characters in Alone in the Dark are three-dimensional rendered upon a two-dimensional fixed background. Mixing polygons and 2D pre-rendered background images required a fixed camera angle, which design is used to their advantage to create dramatic scene setups appropriate for a horror themed game. This was the first time such a style of game had been attempted but it paved the way for so many others. The attorney's letter came as a deep shock to me. My Uncle Jeremy had died by his own hand. In 1994, a port of Alone in the Dark was made for the 3DO by Chrysalis Entertainment. This version makes use of the CD audio as found in the 1993 CD release of the MS-DOS version. This port is very faithful and looks very much like the original in most areas, but now with a slightly softer look. The polygon models have been changed a little to make them look more slender than that of the original game, which was quite chunky in areas. The female character for example no longer has a fat behind on the 3DO version. Controls are pretty much the same, but at least now you can run a little easier by holding down the C button. Uh, 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 uh. 
Next we'll take a look at two Japanese ports by Arrow Microtech Corporation. First is the FM Towns version. Now unfortunately I'm having a lot of trouble running this on my FM Towns. Sadly it craps out after the opening, but what we can see it is far more in line with the original DOS version than the 3DO release. next Japanese port was for the PC-98. This version is very much like the original DOS release, but now with FM audio, although nowhere near the quality found on Japanese developed PC-98 games. That's okay though, as the game is fast. Well, fast for the version of Alone in the Dark. Graphically, it is basically the same as the PC version as well. Not really surprising when the PC-98 is running a version of DOS. Alone in the Dark also made its way onto the Acorn Archimedes, as well as other ARM-based computers of the time. This conversion was handled by James Callan and James Fletcher. As you can see, this version is lacking in graphical fidelity of the other versions, which is quite the surprise. Seems to be running with a lot less colour. Let's take a look at all those versions of Alone in the Dark running side by side. <laughs> 